<laughs> okay, good to go, Doubt. I'll take that as a yes. Oh, yes. We are starting already. <laughs> okay, we are starting already. Typing something again. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hello there, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Ajmoha. And I'm the Viper. And this is episode 11 of the Town Center, your monthly podcast dedicated to all things Age of Empires. Uh, thank you so much, Doubt. And an iconic number calls for an iconic guest. And that's why today we're thrilled to welcome Doubt to the show. He's the definition of a living legend in the Age of Empires universe. Ooh. Someone who's been a top player of this game for over 20 years now and one of the that's most wrong. respected figures in the community. Doubt, thank you very much for taking the time to be here and welcome to the Town Center. Well, we can stop this. Like, this is perfect. End it here. Cut. That's <laughs> it. No need to say anything more. Have you really been playing for over 20 years? 25. <laughs> 25 years. Yeah, I mean, it was like just after the Japanese guys and the Korean guys stopped, that's when it started, right? So that's like, I don't uh, know, like 99, I think. 99. Yeah, and so I was you have been, 14. <laughs> you have been playing age more than half, well, like two thirds of your life. That's pretty crazy, actually, when you think about it. So and you? I'm Looks young like still. I, I'm not even halfway, not, no, I'm not even not halfway there. A few more years you're and I'm halfway. There. <laughs> and hence the living legend status, mm -hmm. you know? Makes sense. Uh, anyway, yeah, I got to say, you're a changed man. I feel like you're a changed man. You know, back back in the day when you used to organize these things, you would always be too late for these things. And now you were here one hour earlier. I'm really proud of you. I'm uh, very I proud needed of you. to show respect to Viper, who is late to his train, right? So I didn't want him to miss and be stuck in Berlin, right? I kindly asked him to be on time today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he wrote to me 3 a.m. that he's ready to go. Already. <laughs> <3 a. m. laughs> <laughs> he has not been to sleep after that, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, that's, 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 that's the way, maybe. That's another thing I'm very curious about. So when we recorded one of those post-match talks, I think it was the one with uh, Warlords, too, if I'm not mistaken. We started recording it at like 11 p.m. or something, and Doubt was too late to it because he had just Obviously. woken up. He had just woken up. <laughs> and now for this episode, when we were setting it up, he said like, okay, my sleep schedule is going to be like Jordan's. So why the hell do you keep changing your sleep schedule? <laughs> it's not me. It's it's him. <laughs> it's sleep who, is, who is him? The day. It has ah, 24 hours. It should yeah, have 25. True. If the day had 24 hour, 25 hours, I would be perfect. How would that change anything? You yeah, you still rotate like two and three hours every day. It's one. Well, okay. when it's during the day, I speed it up, right? Because you cannot sleep during the day. But usually, just one hour. <laughs> well, I, I'm I still, sure that makes sense. I still don't <laughs> see the reason why you keep changing it. Why is it so different all the time? Uh, maybe because, uh, like we said, 25 years of playing, I didn't have a real commitment with a job, right? Waking up. What? This is not a real job. That, that's why I was choosing the words, right? <laughs> that's why I slowed down. <laughs> okay, I guess that sort of makes sense in a way at least. Uh, in any case, in today's show, my friends, it has been a pretty slow month so far in the competitive scene after the conclusion of Hidden Cup 5. Uh, there are always smaller tournaments running, though, such as the Town Center Tango 3v3 tournament, which I believe will conclude next weekend, if I'm not I think mistaken. this weekend. Coming weekend. Sunday, right? I think yeah, so. yeah, yeah, right. So next yeah. week, the coming weekend. Yeah. And our team is one of the finalists. But Oof. why are team game tournaments so rare these days? And what can we do to change that? Uh, then the new scenario only DLC, and I, I got to use scenario only because if I say campaign only, people are going to be mm. a little bit mad. <laughs> the new scenario only DLC, Victors and Vanquished, was released just a few days ago. And so far, it seems to be sending a lot of mixed signals. And we will talk about that. And last but not least, we will focus a little bit more on Amiga Wars. Oh. Amigo well, Wars? Okay, Amigo Wars uh, too. Oh, oh you were gonna oh, yeah, and doubt as well. Yeah, of course, of course. Well, Amigo Wars, you you tell me not to sign up. Like I wanted to sign up and Viper was like, Doubt, don't do it today. Like <laughs> I did not go. say that. Yes, you did. Viper. They wrote to me and was like, Viper, can you not sign up? Because it's ruining with our captains. <laughs> you did. No, they said I will look, maybe we can get you in. And I was like, I didn't tell you to not sign yeah, up. Yeah, I was try. like, I, I told was you to streaming. I was like, okay, Amigo Wars, I will sign up after stream, and you were like, Doubt, uh, they want to be like closer to the Rage yeah. community. Because Doubt, you're too good. And then I see you there. <laughs> you're too good that we cannot have seven captains. Mm -hmm. well, you understand? I, I think the criteria were a little bit exclusive, right? Because yeah. they needed to have 100 games played in Black Forest. Do you have oh, 100 yeah. games yeah. played in the last, the I don't last, know? I think it's last six months. Six months. Oh. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's three months or something. Three months only. They're harsh. Probably even more than that. Like, I play a lot of that. It's fun. All right. All right. Interesting. Uh, now I lost my train of thought. So, uh, yeah, I, I so just we're... wanted to have a chance of winning the tournament, though. For once. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, Cardi. Don't sign up. <laughs> mm. <laughs> 
And last but not least, we will focus a little bit on Dad's career, his assessment of the current state of the game, and his plans for the future. As always, my friend, if you enjoy the work we're doing here and would like to see more of it, it's important you make your voices heard. And the best way to do that is to like comment and most importantly subscribe to the channel it's free and it helps us a lot we're also on spotify the show is called town center an age of empires podcast and if that's how you prefer to listen to us don't forget to rate us five stars indeed and uh coming soon let's not make a big announcement no uh we're going to change the format a little bit so going forward we're going to have two episodes a month so that will be the little tiny change we're going to make so look forward to that yeah, starting in April. I don't think we've uh, we have uh, any date announced to no. announce, but it will st- it will still be like flexible and spontaneous. There might Absolutely. be a month where we just do one episode, but we're Absolutely. aiming for two episodes a month. Yeah. All right. So I'd start to like. Uh, I'd like to start this off, my friends. I'd by start to like. <laughs> what do you start, start to like? like? <laughs> what are you liking? I like all of you guys. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. So I'd like to start this off by reporting on something we discussed last episode, which uh, was whether it's possible or conceivable our active player base might actually be as big as 1 million players. Mm -hmm. Uh, Folks who didn't watch episode 10, they can just go back and uh, check the timestamps for that. But long story short, we came up with that number because every time a new DLC is released, the main menu background changes, and that's basically a mod that everyone downloads automatically, regardless of whether you purchase the DLC or not. So what one viewer of our show did, Mr. Momobo, was he checked how often that mode had been downloaded five weeks after the release of the Mountain Royals, and that number was over one million times now the question was whether things are downloaded when you open the game or whether they're downloaded when you open steam when it just opens steam right and on that note shortly after we released the episode i think i've showed you this actually Mm -hmm. i got a message from someone who asked to remain anonymous and i'll (gasps) obviously honor the request but i know who they are i know their role in the franchise and i can guarantee they know what they're yeah they know what they're talking about so this was the message and i quote Hey, Nelson, Uh, that would be me, (gasps) just letting you know that your assumption about players downloading event mods only when starting the game and not via Steam updates is correct. Smiley face. Which means we have over 1 million players. I don't know. So he he, he didn't confirm or deny the 1 million figure, but he he just said for the speculations about what it means for playing numbers, I'll leave that up to you. But I mean, like when we like the average players on on Steam all time, like it's like usually around thirty thousand, right? We we peak over thirty thousand again, which was like for the first time since COVID April twenty twenty one. I'm gonna exactly. we're gonna be, be bringing we that up. those players then. We had one million players. <laughs> Not at our level. Well, we need coaches. We need coaches to bring them onto your level, Dow. Mm-hmm. That's what we need to do. <laughs> Dow's price is too steep. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> No, you're not any cheaper. <laughs> in any case, I I, I'd be curious to know what folks think about this. Is there any hole in this theory that we're not considering? Uh, because I, I can't see any right now. So we might actually have close to 1 million active players a month, which for me, it's just mind-blowing. Yeah, but I don't think it's crazy considering we have 20,000 plus players at any time of day, right? Pretty much. I guess. I wouldn't know how to extrapolate 20,000 concurrent viewers or players to how many that means in a month. Okay, but going back to today's topic. So just a few weeks ago, Mem released a video sort of openly discussing his current situation, which we'll be linking in the description box down below. And at some point he said he wants to organize another tournament, but he doesn't want to make it a team game tournament because now that Hera is part of Game of Legion, team game tournaments wouldn't be competitive anymore. And he's not the only one saying this. I've seen and read a lot of people saying something like this or something to that sentiment. But every time I hear this doubt, I have to wonder, have folks not been watching 1v1 tournaments recently? Because like the last six one have been won by the same guy. So what do you make of this claim that team games tournament, team game tournaments cannot be competitive anymore just because of how dominant Gamer Legion would supposedly be? Mm, I mean, it is true, obviously, with Hera in the team. We have myself as well, right? Viper, (laughs) Tato. It's a super strong team, but would it be one-sided? Definitely not men- than money once, right? Hard to top that one. Like 5 0 finals all the time. Right. Oh. And I think I remember you're talking about how if you would have a team game tournament right now, mm-hmm. every team would really. You're following, uh, eh? <laughs> yeah. I, I watch your stream down in case you did not know that. <laughs> uh, you, you said kind of like whenever you guys were playing, everybody would be rooting against you guys because everybody wants to see Game of Legion being top down. You know, everybody wants to see a little bit of competition. And that could actually encourage a lot of more people to watch the tournament. And if you guys were I, to I would cheer for the other team. Like, let's go. <laughs> let's go Fox. Like. 
<laughs> yeah, so just imagine if you guys lose like in the first round of a tournament, how much more you know, hype would be surrounding that tournament. You said something like this, and I think it makes a lot of sense, actually. And actually, for one one the skill gap is ceiling is way, way higher. In team games, like, if you're 2.5, it's flank 2.5, let's say Morgugu or Hera, it's not such a huge, massive difference as it would be in one one Morgugu will quote that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's oh, yeah. like ceiling is yeah. way, way lower in team games. I agree. And also like in team is also like the, the draft and the civ synergy can be so much more important and impactful as well, right? Mm. So and I mean I'm thinking back to like Tyrant days, right? We were two like maybe like we had two teams, so like four players in each team, and we were like all top fifteen in the in the world. We still had crazy close games with SY, POZ, uh, we had the Nubs, like uh, Suomi. Suomi. There were so many good teams, right? And games were still super close and entertaining, regardless that people viewed the Tyrant as the dominating team. Like we had me, Doubt, and Jordan, arguably top three, top four players in the mm. game back then, right? And we had Cab, who was a perfect support player. So still were crazy good games, and we should have lost some sets as well. Uh, I, I don't see why that would be too different today, although maybe... Maybe we would be even better on paper today, but again, I think there's so many saves and maps and combinations these days that anything could happen. I think the other teams are probably going to be more competitive, though, because we have Fox, people who are actually getting a little bit of money to play as well. So, mm. uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I think you would have to organize one to see it. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I do understand, though, the sentiment, right? Hera coming to GL. I understand why people would be a bit turned off by team games and like why Mem views it as a... I would say he just views it as a risk to host a team game tournament at this point, right? Mm -hmm. But then again, like like you said as well earlier, King of the Desert was 5-0 finals, NEC... What was NEC? That was 5-2. 5-2, I believe. Five yeah. Two. Um, uh, in my opinion, the Hera skill level is not what will bring so much into the team. Obviously, he brings a lot. But it's more about dedication he brings. And GL, we are all, well, professional players. We get paid to do what we are doing. And that's what other team doesn't have, at least not to that level. And that's where the biggest gap between teams might show up. In any case, I think the truth is that even before Hera joined Gamer Legion, team game tournaments or S-tier team game tournaments have been almost non-existent in sort of the recent years. That wasn't always the case, though. You just mentioned it back in the days. We had a lot of big team game tournaments um, and I would even say that maybe 10 years ago all the biggest tournaments that we had would always be team games and not not as much 1v1s and I think the reason this shift occurred is pretty well understood you know when Microsoft started sponsoring the game a little bit more they told hosts hey you guys need to maximize for your viewership and historically it has always been the case that 1v1 tournaments have higher viewership than team game tournaments so you know, that's clear that then hosts are going to be more likely to want to organize 1v1 tournaments as opposed to team game tournaments. But if you look at like the big esports titles, you know, Counter-Strike, League of Legends, Dota 2, these are all team games, right? Games that you play as a team. And I feel like we might be leaving a lot of potential on the table, but by not investing a little bit more in team games. So in your mind, Orion, why do you think that team games or uh, 1v1 tournaments tend to do a little bit better with viewers on Twitch than team game tournaments? And what can you do to stop that or to change that? Back in the day when team game tournaments was like the only tournaments almost, mm -hmm. we were then only sponsored by personal investors, so to say, right? There were, there were not official sponsorships by Microsoft or any other sponsors. We had uh, individuals coming privately, like being like, hey, I want to host a tournament and I would mm -hmm. like team games, right? Um, I think that's why also team games were more often in the past. But we also have like the amount of work that goes into hosting a team game tournament compared to a only one tournament is also a lot more. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more scheduling issues because suddenly we have like four and five people that need to find the time rather than one and two. Um, server issues, we have more problems can occur without a sync, lag, drops, and so forth. And then, of course, viewership slightly worse as well, historically. And I think as well with team games, there's so many players involved. A lot of the audience don't know a lot of the players involved. Hmm. Right, they'll recognize one or two faces on a lot of different teams, but then there's going to be some other people that they don't haven't really seen before. And again, like this just stretches so far when you have like suddenly 16 to 32 teams and you're they're trying to get interest from all these teams. Hmm. It is hard because they don't recognize everyone. And I'll pass it over to you now, Doubt. Doubt, oh, thank you may you. speak. You may speak. Oh, thank you, thank you. Okay, I'm here as well, not in person, so I guess that's why I'm like <laughs> left out. <laughs> Uh, okay, so like first, Masmora said the uh, Dota, League of Legends, and other games. Those are not RTS games, right? Yeah. Those are meant to be played as team games. Does StarCraft have a big team game tournaments? Warcraft? 
I don't know if there is any other RTS no. game, but there is not team games, right? Casual, well, yes, but uh, RTS is, well, let's say supposed to be played by anyone. That's like what attracts the most viewers. It's the skill level, and that's how it is. On the other hand, Age of Empires is such a beautiful game to play team games. Like, huge, huge map fighting all over the place. It's insane to play a team game. But as a viewer on Capture Age, when you see eight players, mm. how do you even cover that? I, I know I cast few few times for team games. It's impossible. Like, where do you follow? Especially bigger, 44. Action on one side, action on the other side. It's easy to get lost what's happening. It, it's not that attractive to the viewer. For the player, it's amazing. But for the viewer, I think experience for 1v1 is way, way higher. Yeah, I think also 3v3 is easier, a lot easier to cover, actually, compared to 4v4 even. Even though it's just one extra player on the team, it's so much easier to keep track of the action because the pocket will usually just go to one side at a time. And it's way easier to follow. Yeah, the caster, when I watch 4v4s being casted, I get frustrated a lot because I look at the minimap and I'm like, I want to see that, I want to <laughs> see there. Like, oh, what should I look there? But yeah, it's obviously super hard to cover. It's pretty hard. And one thing that it's important to note then, and that's that's why, why I think we might be leaving a lot of potential on the table, is that team games, the team game ladder, mm. has more players than the 1v1 ladder. So yeah. there are more people playing team games than there are people playing 1v1 games. Uh, but It's I, more yeah, fun. I, it's, it's more fun, but it yeah, doesn't need friends. to be a sport. As, like, it's fun. It doesn't need to be competitive, right? That's the beauty of the team games. It's fun. 1v1 is sweaty. Yeah, playing with friends is always better, I agree. But I agree 100% with that, that it's probably a case of how difficult it is to see what's yeah. happening in the game. And this might sound a little bit random, and it probably is, but, you know, whenever I'm watching something like League of Legends, I don't play League of Legends, but I, I like to watch it from time to time because I want to see what are they doing? Can mm -hmm. we learn something from the broadcast or something? And so I obviously don't understand what's happening on the screen or I don't understand, like, the nuances of what's happening on the screen. But when I feel lost, I look at the minimap and I see, okay, so these five guys have the same color. So they belong mm. to the same team. Then they are pushing in this direction. So they are probably attacking right now. You know, by looking at the minimap, you can have a bit of an idea of what's happening. <laughs> if you're a casual viewer of Age of Empires 2, yeah. you watch a 4v4 game, you look at the minimap, you see 80,000 little dots blinking here and there. Yeah. You see eight different colors. You're not going to have a... Sorry, I wanted to say the F word. You're not going to have a clue what's happening. Yeah. And I, I, I know this sounds very random, but I think one thing we could do to sort of make it a little bit easier for casual viewers to watch the game is to massively simplify the minimap. Make it bigger. Make it fewer icons. Uh, make it, I think a no-brainer would be players on the same team need to have the same color. I think this has to be a no-brainer, in my opinion. Not that does think take... Go ahead. <laughs> now when I think about that, that's probably why the Nations Cup tournament is so popular. Then you have two nations, like, mm. you, you know the players, like, and they usually have the tag, like USA and such. It's way easier to follow, right? And you cheer for your nation, and probably it's easier that way for the, well, common viewer to see what's going on and to know who to cheer for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, are, you, are you done speaking, though? Yes, you can okay. take over, Viper. <laughs> okay. Um... Next time I'm coming in person. <laughs> Um, I think the same color thing also though it takes away the individuality right of the players in the team so that's also an issue like people might tune in because they want to see doubt play right and then like mm. wait which color is doubt like wait is this doubt my I mean you can tell probably from the micro sometimes but <laughs> like you don't normally when you have the colors like I'm known for playing in yellow right usually if there's a team game they know Viper is in yellow for example right um, it's a trade off I so agree. I yeah it's a trade off it would be cons pros and cons but i think there needs to be something maybe that identifies players within mm. a team maybe a number i don't know i, I mean i'm not creative enough to come up with a like uh, color outline maybe something, something like yeah. that something but i think that's a no-brainer you need people on the same team need to have the same color and this would have to be something that capturate does because if you're going to wait for microsoft to do this mm. <laughs> uh in any case speaking of the past doubt and this question is for you doubt thank you uh, okay okay <laughs> so i don't answer right I, no no okay. you're, you're totally free to answer it too what were your favorite team game tournaments of the past Ooh. you play them all basically <laughs> and we're banned from some <laughs> yeah banned from some <laughs> oh wait, wait, wait. I, I don't think i know that story our guest okay, tell okay, it. Yeah, Let our true, guest don't true, look at me. True. Uh, yeah, <laughs> offended. World. Well, but what was the name actually? World Clan League, right? That was the name. I don't know. I just heard it before once or twice. You, you played it as well. What? No, not we, when you were banned. No, 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 no. no we, I, mean, I, I didn't start until no, no, 2010. No, 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 no. When Tyrant start uh, getting to the game, right? Yeah. The sponsor, there was yeah. the last World Clan League tournament. And it was Jordan, Ryut, Yu, Dogao, 
You were not yes. banned from that one? No, no, well, not from that one, but that's the tournament I liked. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you were talking about the one you were banned from. <laughs> I was banned from that one, third version or Yeah, fourth. okay. Wait, why were you banned? That, that's what I thought we were talking about. Oh, you guys want that, huh? Yeah, the yeah, juice. I want everything. <laughs> I was banned because that tournament was organized by the Legion Clan. Mm-hmm. And? L Clan. L Clan, yeah. And I left the team. <gasps> How dare you? I left the team and the reason why i left the team was believe it or not i was the most professional in the team what, I, was, yeah, I was young i was motivated <laughs> like i was practicing like first two editions we lost and i was like doing, giving my best right practicing trying to arrange the practice as well what and at that time yeah, yeah, yeah at that time <laughs> i was playing mostly with uh, rami if you remember that player mm -hmm. and he was a really good friend of mine and i wanted him in my team right like make friend with a team with a good player makes sense right mm -hmm. they did not allow him and i was like okay i want to win tournament i go make team with him and at that point argonaut was a team that like pick us up mm -hmm. and legion Khan l clan said we are paid players we ruined the fun of the game and we got banned so l clan did not pay their players i thought l clan was hosting tournaments and like internal tournaments giving money to the players well it's not salary right there was some yeah, okay. tournaments, but later on that stage it was always open tournaments all at the beginning it was only l clan tournaments and then we all joined l clan to play them yeah but as it grew up uh, it was open for everybody but argonaut was paying players like a salary no. or oh, no 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 isn't that, but you just said Elkland accused you guys of being paid. Oh, yes. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> oh, okay. It was not a good accusation. Okay. <laughs> it was like we got paid once for yellow. Like if you get 2.4, you get some ridiculously small amount of money. Like 2.4, 100, 2.5, 200, 2.6, okay. 300. And that's it. But All that right. was publicly known. So we are getting paid publicly, but that's it. Okay. I got $300 hmm. and got banned from tournaments <laughs> as a paid guy. <laughs> was it worth it? <laughs> well, tournaments was like 10K price floor or more, Ooh. 20K, well, so probably not. <laughs> okay. So what was your favorite tournament out? Uh, the one I beat you. Actually, yeah, that was the best one. I barely played, to be fair. Uh, yeah, Dogao benched you. <laughs> it was like me finally playing with old legends, even before mm -hmm. my time. Hmm. Kellen, Grand Cab, and myself. They were retired. I was like new rising star, like here today. Well, not even rising anymore. Like. New rising star. Well, you were well established. Established, okay. Yeah. And there was new rising stars. Mm -hmm. Another team, RVK, right? Yeah. With Viper, Jordan, Ryu, Tadogao. They were dominating the scene. They were beating everybody. And we were like, it's our time. And for the finals, oh God, that was the best finals. That's when I started cooking. I made plans <laughs> for every single map with obviously help of the cab. <laughs> And every plan worked. You guys were so much better skill wise, and you lost the final like four one, I believe. Were we really? Okay, so we first of all, what year was <laughs> uh, this? Yeah, I know we we lost, but like I, I don't remember that we were that dominant. I think you were still well established, like the, by far the best player. Like Rio sometimes would take games of you or like have a good matchup against you, but otherwise you would kick everyone else's butt. From my knowledge, well, me, but Grant was like yeah. one point six. He was. Uh, he was doubt of the team. He never so far through the practice. He didn't care. He obviously is an amazing talent guy, yeah. like me. <laughs> and he just show up. We tell him what to do, and he does. When when it's tournament, he shows up. He plays mm -hmm. maximum. When it's practice, he couldn't care less. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that tournament day, he show up to play. It was so good. I remember Team Island game. We are landing. We are doing a lot of things like all over the place. You guys are constantly overreacting. It was such a beautiful ass game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. I didn't get to play much of that tournament, unfortunately. <laughs> so what, what year was this, Doubt? Oof. 2011. Wow. 11, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That would make sense. <laughs> That's like 12 years ago, more. Like, yeah. <laughs> Such Crazy. a long time ago. Uh, well, what about you? What was your favorite team game term? Oof. I think overall, the just the journey through War is Coming was a big enjoyment for me. I agree. It was War my first coming. time playing properly with Tyrant. We had like a Land Norman tournament before that, but like... Uh, the, the medieval war yeah something like medieval that Tri wars. tribal wars uh, tribal wars tribal wars, tribal wars, wars yeah sure. um but yeah just it was like it was such a long tournament with every format one one two two three three four four even deathmatch was included it was mm -hmm. just like, it felt like the pinnacle everything edge vampires thrown into one and uh, i just enjoyed the whole journey i mean like with the amount of training we put in and work me and jordan put well t that was essentially grunt of our team essentially <laughs> at that point he knew that me and jordan were like the best so he was like he can just show up and be a good third player and he was fine with that i, I was still very solid right nobody yeah, of course. but you guys so why would they well, of course 
Yeah, that was his attitude, essentially. <laughs> uh, we got a bit frustrated with that, but uh, it is what it is. Um, no, but yeah, that was a, a lot of fun for me, the whole the whole process. And obviously, we ended up winning, and we got to go to Dubai again, and it was just that's, a whole that's journey. That's so crazy. Yeah, so to the folks who weren't around, that was in 2014, if I'm not mistaken. And I think to this day, that's still the second highest prize pool in the Age of Empires history. I think only Red Bull Legacy. It was $110,000, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure, so only Red Bull Legacy yeah. With two hundred thousand dollars, top that, which is pretty crazy to think about. Sponsored by one single by guy. one single guy, yeah. the that would be the tyrant sponsor, whose identity is one of the oldest and best kept secrets in the Age of Empires community. Only you guys know who he is, obviously. I don't think anyone else. Not sure know. what you're talking about. I don't yeah. have no idea either. <laughs> have you guys actually heard anything from the tyrant sponsor over the years? Ever, th- ever since the tournament is, because he kind of disappeared. After no the comment. Tournament. No comment. Really, you can't say he said anything <laughs> no or comment. not. Next okay, question. No- all right, interesting. Okay, what about Cab? Have you heard anything about Cab? I write to him. I like we talk maybe like once a year or so. He suddenly he will like randomly sometimes he will write to me like, "Hey Viper, what's the newest patch?" and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, what? You still follow the game? Sometimes he like I think like two years or three years ago he wrote to me and just well, like asked me like how to watch a recorded game. Mm-hmm. Like so he he like randomly shows up sometimes. And so he's got like, DE at least that. Maybe it was right before DE like in Wubli. So th- th- uh, that would be five years ago though. Yeah, I don't know. But like, um, he just randomly sends messages sometimes. I don't know if he's actively following Age to the degree where like he would be paying attention. But yeah, he sometimes uh, tunes in. I think it's still so surreal just thinking of you guys playing in a palace, playing Age of Empires mm-hmm. in a palace, skydiving. There are actually videos of that. I'm going to put the videos on screen. <laughs> down do skydiving. I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> the scariest thing in my life. <laughs> oh, that was so sick. I, I just rewatched it a couple of days ago. It was actually, you, you did well. I, I thought it was pretty funny. Well, we yeah. knew we were being filmed as well. We had to put yeah, on a yeah, brave face. You know? <laughs> but just seeing, like, like I'm not sure when I jumped, but like, I think it would have been best to be first because <laughs> whoever was left behind, you just saw one guy go out the door Uh-oh. and he's just gone. <laughs> it was just such a scary like vision. Uh, one uh, of the funniest ones for me was Cab because uh, there was a girl giving instruction and kind of <laughs> felt to me like he was more scared of the girl than of jumping. <laughs> no, man, Cab's such a unique character. Like He's so naturally fun to be around. Just He doesn't try either, right? He's just such a And how was the sponsor good, himself? Good Super nice as well. Amazing guy. Couldn't be more thankful. And has he contacted you in the last couple of years? I think he has. No, enough. he did not. <laughs> okay, there you right. go. I, I was hoping. I was hoping it would catch you off guard with that one. Uh, okay, doubt. So uh, you're basically someone who's witnessed firsthand the whole competitive scene ever since there was a competitive scene in the first. Old. Place. <laughs> <laughs> so would you still say that 2024 is the best year to be a professional Age of Empires player? No, <laughs> really okay. not. Okay. Uh, best was when D started. That was the best to start being a professional player. Now, I said this probably many times on my stream, but now is the hardest one. Like back well, then, the question is, was different, Doubt. He asked if this is the best time to be, not to start. Okay, it is the best to be. Because right, there's so most that's... money, but it's hardest to get to that fight. There we go. Right, okay. Uh-huh. Like Doubt, do you want to be a guest on the podcast? I will you <laughs> listen to the questions. And answer the question. Okay, okay. Okay, go on. Uh, no, no, you, you go on. So why do you think it's right now the hardest? Is it because the compet- competition is at the highest? Uh, not because of that. Well, not only because of that, but when we started, when D started, we were all like amateur players, playing from hobby more or less. And now we are established like a lot of teams got salary. There are big teams. There are big prize pool that you're earning. For example, Hera Leary, viper to some degree or they're taking the big part of the prize pool and they're motivated to go for the next tournament and they have a well credit to back up from the last tournament for me to start to compete now with Hera, viper and others how i need to dedicate at least one year of zero payment and then if i make it i will maybe earn a bit more than average on let's say best europe hmm. thanks for the motivating words for our upcomers though i know <laughs> Okay, what do you think? Um, I do I do agree. I think Edge of Empire takes a lot of time to get good at because you need so much experience in different situations. You can be the best macro, best micro player in the world, but if you don't have the experience and know how to react at the right time, that's not going to help you. And even slow players can beat you. So, um, no, I, I agree. I think starting out would have been the best in DE. Like if you already were like 16, 17, 1800 and you wanted to try to go pro, 
I think starting out back then would have been the best. Hmm. Right now, we, but I still think we we have enough players right now that are like on the on the brisk of making it. Right, we have like people like Sebastian, Sita, uh, Mihai. I mean, I can name a lot of even the Hidden Cup. Now we saw like a lot of new, a lot of new players that made it to the top sixteen, for example, and people with great performances in um, in the qualifiers as well. So I still think those, as long as they keep the hunger and keep trying and have time and that de- de- dedication to put in the work. They have a chance to become pro, but obviously to get to the level of, for example, Hero today, it's going to be really, really tough. Mm-hmm. Doubt from the new names, from the guys that are kind of new, who do you see having a chance of actually making it, I don't know, to a top five player? <laughs> Next question. <laughs> <laughs> you, can name, you can name several people. I can name that. zero. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't mention yourself. Okay, so I, I, I thought you said that because it would uh, there would be too many people to name, but I, I guess what I'm seeing now is that nobody's going to have a chance of doing it. Is that what mm. you mean? <laughs> well, I had that click when Viper showed up. I knew he would be better than me at one point. I had the same click with Hera. I had the same click with Lyria. Obviously, that was easy to spot. Mm-hmm. What about but Jordan? No, Jordan, no. Zero talent? Zero talent, no. <laughs> Famously. Yeah, only happened basically with Viper and Hera. Like for Hera, I knew he, that guy will like that guy will see the world. <laughs> when he was like 2K playing only hands for you, you saw how clean he plays and how he's growing, how he's yeah, motivated the, and all. Using moving the camera with W A S D, right? It was well, you knew, <laughs> and also knew right to me when he starts streaming that he'll be an amazing streamer. His uh, natural way of talking, like always, how do you even say? He is a funny guy to talk with. Mm-hmm. He has good comments. He's reading the chat. He's very interactive. Perfect for a streamer. Like you saw the potential right away. Now from the new guys, <laughs> I don't see that level. I you know what Google level. stream? Mm, yes, I do, but I don't see <laughs> it. <laughs> Man, it's just hard cold facts without there's no sugar coating. I mean, no, again, nothing. it doesn't need to be the best of the best. Like I recognize Viper, I recognize Hira, but Kim or Google can be number three, number five. But as number one, I don't see anybody right now. Again, the question was and who can make it to top five, and this guy. A top five yeah, was question. Yeah, yeah, but it's fine. That's very encouraging. That's very encouraging, though. I think a lot of people are going to feel happier about that. Okay, so going back to the present now, I want to talk a little bit about the tournaments. 3v3, TC, Tango. How do mm. guys, uh, is, it a, is it a fun tournament to play? How do you guys feel about it? Doubt. No, no, okay, no, no. it's one of the most fun tournaments in the last wow. years. Like, it's so unique. You're stuck with one TC. Like, you're changing your strategies. Not only you can snipe TC to win the game, obviously, but you're stuck with one TC economy. So losing a villager hurts way more. It's not like trading army for villagers is kind of paying off, but at the same time, you can get overrun and lose TC. It's it's future. I like it. Future? Amazing. I oh, it's not future, thing. but it's fine. I'm not sure if it's yeah, the future. Can you, see a, can you see a 3v3 $20,000 tournament with this uh, mode no. happening? <laughs> no, but okay. it's a very fun casual tournament. It, it, it has a gimmick to it, right, that is fun, but it, it will never become the norm. Just like Empire Wars, it can be fun for Red Bull, but it's never going to be the norm, right? Uh, I think as well it's fun. I only played one round so far, but it has been fun. Uh, we also have like the Sudden Disaster, the 1v1 one one tournament, tournament with the same format. You can only stay on one town center, and that one is a lot of fun. Was there like some coordination between the folks organizing the tournaments, or is it just so. coincidence? Okay. I, I know John Slow was thinking about the Sudden Disaster tournament already like a couple of months ago. Like even during NAC, people were talking to me about it, like amongst his clown community. <laughs> uh, they mentioned if I wanted to play it, and so I, I don't think that was like they didn't work together to make it happen at the same time. Well, okay. basically, the the arena players lose arena because people make TCs and Moncash doesn't work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so John Slow had to come up with new stuff. <laughs> You're stuck with one TC now. Deal with monks. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, that's the this is standard game mode, right? It's in DE. It's not like a mod, right? Is it? Yeah, they have, you have stun, uh, sudden death as a game mode. As a game mode. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's not you don't need to download something. No, it's no, no. Like you can choose the game. it. Yeah. Right, right, right. But you even have like extra conditions, right? No, we have sudden death and register at the same time in one of the maps, for example. Right. Of course, when we played a show match, a certain player was not able to put the correct settings. But um, I guess that was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like host. I should be forbidden to host. <laughs> I, th- I think already, like we have so many close. Ma- like I think doubt only beat RMQ three two only. Right, I beat uh, you putting three you're two, putting so three we have like two. some crazy six sets already with the sudden disaster. It's super fun. I learned a lot from that game actually. He he surprised me a few times. Not gonna say how, but yeah, you, it's really good, right? You're learning from some new players that you would probably not learn on normal settings. It's mm-hmm. good. Interesting. 
What things usually do better in a normal game, but do not work in this type of a mode? Well, just regular macro play, obviously, because you have the economy and thesis, right? In in this game mode, uh, castle drops is the killer. <laughs> You get a cast in your TC, you're in big trouble. That's well, the right. annoying part, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> on so Quadra, it's like, rush the castle, you stop losing religious, and drop a castle in the face. That's I'm, I'm not sure if you saw mine and Doubt's game on Socatra. <laughs> no, I didn't. Oh, God. <laughs> we both had a castle in each other's town center, <laughs> and we both were down to like 200 HP. <laughs> but he was able to destroy mine first, but like, <laughs> those types of moments are so fun. Okay, okay, interesting. All right, so uh, then just a few days ago, we already talked about it. We have the DLC Victors and Vanquished, mm -hmm. and we said in the beginning there are a lot of mixed signals surrounding it so far. So on Steam, this DLC is by far the worst one in terms of reviews. It only has a 30% positive review rate, which is pretty low. Uh, but on the other hand, as we just said in the beginning of the episode, we just very recently, I think it was like this past weekend, we reached over 30,000 players online at some point, which is a record uh, from uh, April 2021. So the last yeah. time we had as many players was on April 2021, Three which years was pretty ago. much the height of the pandemic. And I think it's pretty obvious to assume this is this all got to do with the DLC's release, right? So uh, the first thing that a lot of people don't like about this is that it's a scenario-only DLC, and that's one of the first critiques because at first it was actually advertised as a campaign-only DLC. Mm. Though, to be fair, it was very clear from the beginning that there wouldn't be any new sieves, and a lot of people were also complaining that there were new sieves, so people just got to read a little bit better. And another important point is that it's got a price tag of $13. So the, that would mean this DLC is a little bit cheaper than the Return of Rome or the Mountain Royals, but still more expensive than all the other ones before that that actually brought new saves to the game and stuff like that. So you do have a fair bit of experience, Orion, playing campaigns. So what do you make of the DLC so far? Um, I mean, like I, I only played the Ragnar Lothbrok so far. Uh, I did a mistake of starting that six hours into my stream, not knowing how long it was going to be. Ooh. And it was I, I think I'd spent over three and a half hours uh, in game for that campaign. It was brutal. Uh, three, but, four hours. Yeah, but it's like uh, them, it was so well made, though. Like there were so many mechanics and uh, small different things that are, we don't have in the other campaigns. So overall, I think it was really well made. It looked beautiful as well. Uh, but obviously, like for me, I view these things a bit different as well because I'm also creating content out of it mm -hmm. in return, which is like this is my job, right? So I mean, like. I spent three and a half hours to four hours on the only one of the, I think it's 19 scenarios. Yeah, 19 in total. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like I already got kind of my, my, my money's worth for the DLC, right? But I understand why people say the price tag is high as well, because a lot of these scenarios aren't new. They already existed previously as 14 a... 14 of them, yeah. Yeah, as a mod and downloadable in the... For free, so to say, right? So I understand why people can argue, also argue that oh, the price tag, price tag is too high with that in mind. And yeah, but otherwise, like I agree with you, like the, the wording and how they presented the DLC, it was very clear what it was going to be. So the people that complain about it after buying it, it makes no sense. It's like, if you don't want this, that it clearly says it is, then why do you buy it and then complain about it? It mm -hmm. clearly states what it's going to be. So yeah, people need to learn to read. Dad, I actually don't know what's a relationship to campaigns like. Have you ever played them? Do you like campaigns? As somebody who played Age of Empires for 25 years and played every single Age of Empires game, Age of Empires 1, Age of Empires 2, every DLC, Age of Empires 3, every DLC, Age of Mythology, every DLC, this is the only DLC I didn't get by and have no motivation to do that. Now, I'm not sure if I'm their target audience, no, you're not. Definitely but not. Yeah. There is a lot of old guys that will buy everything from Age of Empires. Mm -hmm. And they will not do it here. Like New sales is something we don't need, but we want. <laughs> that's basically it. Yeah. That, that's it. We don't need more sales, but we want them. And yeah, looking for myself, and I'm sure there are more guys like me. If it was new DLC I, with uh, new sales, instant buy. <laughs> Still, we have to recognize as well, well-established. Single player is massively popular in Age of Empires. Mm -hmm. So it, it's understandable that they release a single player focused campaign and spike the price a little bit higher, right? Because there's so many people buying it anyway for single player purposes. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I understand as well why people can say, oh, it's just a easy, uh, low effort cash grab. Understandable as well. But I like personally, I'm like, 
I'm always also fine with buying these things because it supports the game and the development, and it means the game can continue to get new DLCs and new game modes, whatever. Like it's for for the future as well, so to say. Mm -hmm. One of the things, or one of the reasons, this DLC might not have had new saves is because a lot of people were complaining we already have more than enough. So I would assume, doubt you don't actually agree with that. You wouldn't mind having more saves all the time. More than better. <laughs> more than better. Now, obviously, like for the new players, it's probably disaster already. Like so mm -hmm. many saves, so many new patches that change the balance. It's hard to keep up. But at the same time, if you play casual, well, do you care about new <laughs> Like you still want to test them, right? It's hard to balance. It's really hard to balance. I like that Microsoft tried now with only campaign. They didn't receive probably the feedback they wanted. So I assume they will go back with the new saves. I would like it. I'm least. not sure because again, yeah, a lot of negative reviews, but a mm. lot of people are playing the game right now. It's, of course, there's a lot of seasonality to to this. You know, in March, April are you know times of the year that tend to do better. Yeah. I mean, the re reviews themselves might not be an indicator of how many people have bought right. it or are right. playing it, right? right? I also want to on what he said, like uh, it is extremely overwhelming. Obviously, we have now what 40, 44, 45, 45, 45 sips, yeah. <laughs> But like, if you let's say you start playing League of Legends or Dota right now, right? Over one hundred. The amount of heroes there you have to learn it's like even more. So it's like, obviously those games are a bit more casual, but um, I, I still think like it's a different point of view for us as well as content creators, and we want to stream and have fun, mess around, abuse the new mechanics, new saves, make masterpieces, this and that, all for content and laughs as well. So we obviously have a different opinion as well when it comes to new saves because for us it's just another addition, another layer to have fun with and explore the game and reinvent the game. And that's also important, I think, for the game to continue to be interesting and fun. And that's also why I like that they... I mean, we played how many years without any balance changes? How many years did we play with zero balance changes? <laughs> 15, I don't know. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> and just that we have like few balance changes every couple of months. It, it changes so much about the game as well. Just like the new RAM behavior now, for example, we'll touch on the new mechanics and such soon, mm -hmm. but like it adds so much different that some people have to take into account and play around with. And I, I personally love that a lot. But mm -hmm. Viper, imagine if the yes. last DLC didn't have the new tears, we would not have mules. Life <laughs> would be empty. Exactly. exactly. We need new tears, we need new mechanics. It's fun. That's my point. Yeah, exactly. Life would be empty. I like it. So I have to agree with that, uh, or not really agree, but for me, it's the same thing. Whether I'm actually going to play a DLC or not, I'm, I'm just going to buy it because I want mm -hmm. to support the franchise. This one, I haven't bought it yet just because, yeah, $13 for something I know, or 13 euros, uh, for something I know I'm not going to be using because I don't play any campaigns at all, feels a little bit steep. And uh, But yes, go ahead. But that makes sense. You're not going to play them, so you don't buy it. Right, but I want to support. I want to support the franchise. I want to. I want to give. <laughs> then you can like just buy those animated skins then no, or something. No, right? in any case, I think they should go on uh, with these kinds of DLCs. I think people do like them a lot. I think the reason why this DLC might be a little bit more expensive on the more expensive side, and this is just wild speculation on my part. So, as you said, fourteen of these DLCs or these scenarios have already were already available for mm -hmm. free on the what is it called mod center, mod center. or something. But the thing is. The guy who made him, he made him for free, right? So if now mm -hmm. Microsoft is going to be selling him for a profit, I'm pretty sure Microsoft are paying royalties or yeah. have paid for the rights to Filthy Delphi is his name, I believe. Were all of them made by him? Every single one of them? I believe all of these scenarios, Sick. all of them were made by Filthy Delphia. Or, or at least all of these 14 ones that are were already existing before were made by him. And Sick. he made him for free as a passion project. So mm -hmm. if Microsoft's not going to be making money out of those scenarios it's pretty sure they're paying him royalties they're paying something so that's why maybe they jumped yeah. up the price a little bit but that's wild speculation though in my opinion also a cool story right again forgotten empire started off making a fan-made exactly uh, new civilizations fan-made dlc microsoft picks it up because it's great quality and they release it and support it officially and that's just great for everyone yeah i, th I think they're testing the waters to yeah. see how people like uh, these kinds of scenarios doubt so as usual a new dlc also brings a new patch balance changes and in this case we even have new quality of life features such as the resource drop off command and seek shelter and back to work and all those things how do you feel about those changes amazing thing like mm -hmm. that's the correct way like adding new tiers obviously will confuse all play new players but those new quality of life changes that's really good idea whoever come up with that deserves a raise like that will put new players like age of empires is such a hard to game to pick up because you need to have a clean dark age before anything. Strategy game doesn't start if you don't finish Dark Age, well, <laughs> with normal resources. And this will help a lot. It will make players way easier to pick up to the game. 
and then later on maybe learn different tips as well. Perfect. I love it. Mm -hmm. Dow, do you have a hotkey for the drop? Yes. Drop resource yeah, the first really? Thing <laughs> wow. Come on to like that. Have you, I, I have you spamming it like it's even more efficient now. <laughs> have you tried Chinese opening with this? Uh, not yet, actually. Oh, get that. That's probably the best, so the good, best no. thing. As yeah. if Chinese needed another buff to get like a direct buff by that one. It's crazy. I think you can cut the idle time now to like 10, 11 seconds, which is insane. Idle time, usually it would be like 20 seconds, right? Usually it would be around that, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like Chinese now works with two and a half, three more bills. For free, nice. they, already, they already got yeah, and they got like five extra population on the TC as well. A uh, recent change as well, so they're pretty good. I believe the resource drop off thing was sort of a copy from Age of Empires Four, if I'm not mistaken. They have something similar there, yeah. Yeah, so I guess they just copied it. Yeah, I, well, I'm actually like not it. sure if they have a drop resource thing. Six they shelter, have the, yes. Six shelter, yeah. they have. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I'm confusing with that one. Yeah, the drop resource thing, I don't think they have. But, uh, but Starcraft, for example, has that. Is that a game changer? The seek shelter thing, or not really? Doubt. For top players, it will make a bit cleaner build, but it's same. Like it's my build is cleaner, Viper build is cleaner. We are playing same. He's, he's ignoring <laughs> your question again. <laughs> will it change? It won't. He's talking about seek shelter. Oh, but seek <laughs> shelter <laughs> only with Kmer. <laughs> the micro potential with Kmer should be insane, but other than that, I don't see it. I still didn't use it. Uh, me neither, actually. I don't think it makes a big difference. Like the amount of time you would take to garrison them yourself. I mean, I, the only way I would see it is like if you get like suddenly 40 hustlers show up in your farm economy, right? You just click seek shelter on all those wheels. That would be good, but I don't think otherwise you're going to be actively using it. But I think it's very good for new players and beginners and casuals. Mm -hmm. So and One more option, right? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah. You wanted to talk about the RAM thing earlier on. So Oof. what do you have to say about that? I think you're talking about that thing that you can just in garrison units yeah. and they fire automatically and then you... You have the, let's say you have 12 Janissaries and two RAMs. You just have your Janissaries on control group two. You just right click the RAM as you're garrisoning it, and they will spread and they into both. automatically. Yeah. And okay. then you have one click to eject them. And yeah, they pretty much instantly shoot as they get out. So people view it as broken. I, I don't think it's broken. Uh, it, it has counterplays. You just need to don't be an idiot. And again, if broken, <laughs> hey, only hey, for sorry, one percent of the player base or 0.05% of yeah. the player base. No, but that that's where I think it's like it, I think it might be a horror at lower level, though. That's my concern, right? I think uh, lower players, lower. Sorry, a lower elo players might not have the right idea of how to counter it, so mm -hmm. they will have to learn for sure. So I can see it being a little bit of a horror story down the elo, but uh, on higher level, I think you just need to know how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. It's similar to the Huang rush, right? At lower elo, it's super hard to stop. At high elo, it's no problem. And same here, like Janice are into Rams. I mean, it's so expensive, it's so all Yeah, it should mm -hmm. not work if you don't make any major mistake. Okay, then balance changes. I believe they're not. A lot of them, there's the Georgians, of course, that now start with the correct amount, not correct, with the standard amount of food. What do you feel? How do you feel about that, Jordan? Uh, Jordan. Oh, oh, that was you, Jordan. Down. I get disrespected oh. in this oh, one. Sorry, sorry. It was okay. Georgians, Jordan in my mind. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I think they're the best Arabia Sieve. Actually, they're best on every map now. It's a massive change. It's awesome. Best Arabia Sieve? Not only because of the normal opening, but scout healing is brutal now. Did you play against them? Scout healing is nerfed, though. Mm, is it? I feel it's higher. No, 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 no. <laughs> what do you feel is wrong? <laughs> no, no, no. It has to be higher. No. It, it was five, <laughs> HP, 5 HP in, in uh, Dark Age. Wait, is it 50? No, no, no. no. It's clear the Dark Age, yeah, maybe, maybe, it's six, yeah, maybe it's 6 HP now. So it's like 1 HP more every minute. So it's minute. not nerfed. It's... No, but it, it's, it's nerfed for everything that is not high HP units overall. Because like in as the game goes on, but yeah, in feudal age, I think it's the scout percent, is probably the percent works. That more yeah, you have, more you get. Exactly, which is why it's better for high HP units. Yes, obviously, but it's even better for the lower one. But a scout has forty-five HP, right? Okay, and it was five HP healing yes. per. Okay, minute let's round it out to let's say scout got fifty HP. How much yes. is ten percent of fifteen? Five. And this is fifteen percent. That's that, why I'm saying that more than five. Is, it's one HP more. There you in go. So age, it's buff and with the bloodlines. But that's not a big deal. I well, think it doesn't make them the best sieve. I think there's still does. multiple no, sieves no, no. that will be better. Well, maybe not. Okay, I know that's okay, what just to, make, <laughs> just to make sure we don't spread any misinformation here, uh, I have the notes in front of me. So, cavalry regenerates 5, 10, 15 HP per minute. So, this was the old mm -hmm. bonus. It's now been changed to cavalry generates 15% HP per minute, starting if you delay. Yeah. I have no clue <laughs> what that means <laughs> in practice, horrible. whether it's better or worse. But <laughs> No, it's worse. All right. How can it be worse? Okay, knight 
Knight got 100 HP. I guess we need Spirit of the Law here. Knight got 100 it's HP. Worse? Spirit it, it, it's simple, simple math. Knight is 100 HP. Yeah. 15%. That's 15 HP, right? Yeah. And that was the maximum Imperial Age in all patch. It makes sense in my head. There now, you go. Name, but but like, uh, and now we get it in Castle Age. When, when I looked at up, different different parts of the game, maybe when I looked at it, or people, I would talk to my chat. They said it's it's a nerf. <sighs> it's probably but, nerf it's yeah, yeah, now that chat I'm watch the, the, the thing. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Oh. In any case, but I thought it would only be better for the absolute high HP units. I mean, okay, yeah, in feudal age, yes, but as the game goes on, it's worse it's more for. Which I just explained. Knight, back hundred HP. So it gives yeah. exactly the same as old in that's, Castle Age. Yeah, yeah. With Bloodline. Yeah, it should be. Okay. Instead yeah, of Imperial I, Age. And with Bloodlines with Calvary, it even dries. Yeah, I accept. I accept. There you I go. Accept. And okay, more then, important, but, mm -hmm. you have a better opening now. You start yes. with Mule. Everything goes to the food. You make Mule, you click up. Your scout is healing. So much potential to do whatever you want. You heal Mule. You can dance around. But, Dawn, wall, whatever you want. Perfect. But? But Chinese still collect 300 more resources than you. But I have Mule for free. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay, yes, Chinese oh, is maybe, but okay, one of the best. Georgian well, they're not the best. Save. But okay, on the water map. Can Chinese play water map? Georgians can. Uh, I, I can pick another <laughs> save there. <laughs> All around. We didn't say Arabia. Georgians select... You said Arabia. <laughs> we okay. have the receipts in our, our podcast. Georgians are like top five receipts. on every map right now. They can okay. play every map on high level. Very, Probably the best on high level maps. Water maps like Vikings, Italians, Portuguese, Bengalis, Armenians. Ah, are you sure about that? I'm drafting the first next to okay. whatever settings are. <laughs> okay. We'll do that anyway before as well. Yeah, play <laughs> <one matter. laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's just a few weeks ago, we also got our first look at Age of Myth, uh, Mythology Retold. Ooh. And from what I've been hearing and reading, it seems like a lot of folks are excited for this. You already talked about it a lot. I believe you did play quite a bit of mythology back in the day, Doubt, didn't you? So are you excited about what you see so far? Well, I didn't see anything so far. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm excited. like the models the and a couple of screenshots. I mean, I'm excited they're making that game and hopefully it will be like same from AV2. To A to D. Mm. Now, Age of Mythology, if it's same level as D on AV2, <laughs> cannot wait. Should be really good. We'll probably retire AV2 D and switch to that probably for like two or <laughs> two months or so. Most two likely. Months? Okay. Yeah. All right. It'll be super awesome. fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, doubts. Now that we got all the news out of the way, we want to focus a little bit more on you, uh, your streaming career. So, first thing I'd like to know about this are you actually a full time streamer? Do you consider yourself a full time streamer? GL is there behind you. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'm full time streamer. Like I, I have my hours. I I, I respect my contract. I mean, but the fuck I mean, that's, what, that's not what they want to hear, though. Well, I am full time. Obviously, I'm full. -time. You're not a full time streamer. You're full time. I'm full time though. everything. Like full time. Yeah, exactly. Influencer, content, podcast. Give me, I I do it. <laughs> I'm there. I always describe our job in this AOE world as a hybrid role between competitor and content creator. Okay. And I think that fits that yeah. pretty well. Okay, so I so you do have minimum amount of hours that you have to stream, I assume, from what I heard from you. Leaking content. <laughs> I'm not leaking anything. Just I'm, just, I'm just, just trying to gather information from what I hear from you. Uh, but it's still pretty clear you're one of the streamers, and this is no critique whatsoever, obviously, you're one of the streamers that streams the least. Huh? Is it because... Well, I just did an hour of stream. Like, you're just not awake during when he's streaming. No, 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 exactly. Well, you know, I wouldn't bring this claim if I didn't have receipts. So oh, now, okay. now you're forcing me to do it. Oh, so boy. here we go. In the last 90 days. No, no, no. Doubt... no. <laughs> <laughs> I am out. God. <laughs> okay, let's stop it here then. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm just wondering. Is it because you don't, in, you just stream as much as you have to and that's okay? You don't feel like you have to do more? You don't particularly like streaming? What is it? I actually love streaming. But like why Pernod, okay. I'm addicted to streaming. Addicted. Addicted, indeed. Like, it's true. Like, playing practice when nobody says I'm addicted to that feeling, I'm egoistic. Now, when you play audience, see your, I don't know, doubt, cast your moves, something, and you want to share that. And makes me feel better as well, right? It's a fun part. But streaming hours, well, I do it as much as I enjoy, right? If I did do it more, I would burn out. I mm -hmm. have also content. I, I take care of YouTube, my socials, prepare for tournaments. 
It took check on the Celtic. YouTube, but... <laughs> check his YouTube uploads. <laughs> He's got a lot of YouTube uploads, actually. I did check there it. Uh, it's a good balance. It's a healthy balance. To check the last five years. <laughs> My fair. No, okay, yeah, go on, go on. Yeah, so you just stream as much as you like, and you feel like if you would stream even more, it would just that would just burn you out. Then I would feel like a job, right? Then I would okay, I need to stream now. This and... is a job. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Edit. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what people have to remember though, like in doubt's defense here, it's like of course there's also practice for tournaments, preparation for tournaments, playing tournaments. You have a lot of things you need to answer and take care of out of playing the game and streaming as well. So there I'm not sure how much doubt has to take care of, but in general there is usually a lot of a lot of things that you have to spend time and energy on where it's like it might suddenly take an hour and then it's like ah, then I only have this amount of time to stream. And it's like I don't want to stream for just two hours so you don't go live that day. Things like that happen and it's like it's, it's just the life of a streamer. Mm-hmm. And as you notice, now when there is no S tier tournament this month, I'm streaming a lot. Like mm-hmm. you're hours, streaming a lot more six hours, ten hours per day. Not yeah, every crazy, day, right? but yeah, now it's actually true. I'm not even kidding now. Because there's nothing to no... do with the fact that there's nothing to do at the night. No. <laughs> 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 yeah, maybe that as well. But it's like you don't get burned out by the practice. You don't think about the civilization. Yeah. You don't have that pressure of, well, playing. Like it's also it's a pressure. Now you're just chilling, streaming, playing Black Forest. It's fun. The amount of time we have started a training session where we say like, "Yeah, hey, we're gonna stream after," and then like after training for like three, four hours, no we're like, "No, <laughs> Forget not about doing it." it. Yeah, yeah. But what do you mean? There's nothing to do at night. That's when he streams. No one. Else, what else is there to do at when night? you wake up at three a.m.? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I guess. What so. else to do? <laughs> That's like, how I put it. Okay, so something I think it's becoming clear or ever more clear as the years go by. Uh, it's just how mentally tough. It actually is to be a full-time streamer. And, you know, Dave talked about this last episode that every time a stream is over, he gets like an email with like a summary of his stream. The numbers are up or the numbers mm-hmm. are down. And, you know, T90 constantly talks about how he needs to find a better work-life balance. Nearly basically quit because he was burned out. Uh, again, we just talked about Mem that recently released a video laying out his worries about a situation. So do you feel this pressure of streaming as well, Dale, there despite being... You do five not. years streaming, playing, and still enjoying. I so you do not out. feel this pressure Perfect right now. Balance. No, I don't. No, I don't. I I actually enjoy this, right? Taking the maximum out of it because the best way to put it, it's best job to have because working hours are not. It's flexible. Can't spend time with the family for myself, whatever. Stream, enjoy, play tournaments, travel, all fun. Enjoy it. No need to overdo it. I like but it. <laughs> it. It's also like, and some for some people it will be like you have to do. It. Like we are also fortunate situation of being backed by an esports organization at the same time, right? So we also probably feel a bit less on that, like compared to Mem, for example, who is like he's by himself, right? So when he, if his numbers drop a little bit, like suddenly he's like, oh, this is like the income for his family, right? Mm-hmm. So if his numbers go down, I completely understand that he gets like worried and like starts thinking about it. Obviously, mm-hmm. I think we're in a bit more comfortable position with our backing here as well uh and like doubt says it, it's essentially, essentially like make the most out of it as long as it lasts right and might as well enjoy it while you're on the ride okay so your advice to all these people doubt would just be stream less stream as much as you enjoy like if you make make it hard work like well do something else then <laughs> this is a fun it's a video game after all and we are here to entertain you guys Ooh. And you entertain the best when you're having fun yourself. Exactly. I mean, you're not bad yeah. when you're not forced to play. Just enjoy. Beautiful. Awesome. Awesome such advice. Wise words. Mm-hmm. Such wise words. You can tell this guy has played for a long, long, <laughs> and long, long time. And long to play more. <laughs> uh, Doubt, in the past, in the very distant past, you used to be a poker player. Do you still play poker from time to time? No. Well, that was actually, yeah, I was starting streaming because Viper convinced me. But, You're welcome. Uh, yeah, thank you, actually. Uh, I was playing poker doing that, and I enjoy more poker than streaming. Streaming, believe it or not, doesn't go well with my persona. I'm more, yeah, yeah. I'm more <laughs> keeping myself to myself, guy, right? <laughs> but over the time, I kind of, well, <laughs> learned to be myself during the stream as well. But mm-hmm. I prefer like poker, or like open 20 tables. So my, I'm at myself at home, 20 tables. 20 tables. Enjoy. Wow. I was Scamming grinding. Up. Yeah, I was Scamming not a good player. The, I was a grinder. <laughs> that, that's exactly it. 
Uh, if I remember correctly, though, you started playing poker because of a very serious hand injury that you had yeah. during uh, <laughs> during a little a little episode. Uh, well, folks can go back and listen to my interview with Doubt. It was a couple of years ago. Uh, you were still recovering last time we spoke. You're still recovering from that hand injury. How does it feel right now? Doesn't feel anything. I still have no feeling in that hand, but it so doesn't it hasn't me. gotten any better. I mean, I no, think at this point it's not going to heal, right? That ship is sailed, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to living with that. Uh, what exactly does it feel like? You just don't feel, you don't have enough, as much feeling in one hand and on the other one. The what exactly? The best example is, you know the feeling when you sleep on the hand mm -hmm. and when you wake up and that's it. <laughs> that's how it feels constantly. Okay. Well, like the whole hand, only yeah, a part only, of it? Only the fingers. But you don't have like the tickling feeling, like it's just that it, you don't the have feeling. The tickling feeling was there at the beginning, but yeah, that that yeah. doesn't exist anymore. So it's just that when you click a key, you don't actually feel. I the don't click. Feel it. That's why yeah. I use my keyboard. I cannot change it so easily. <laughs> Makes sense. Do you feel like that kind of prevents you from performing better, or not really? Imagine Obviously. if he had. Thank you. <laughs> Imagine him if he had full feeling. Oof. That's it. I don't want to see that. If Red Bull would not. He would not only be talking about Rebel 3, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Bye, Percent it all. <laughs> okay, so as we've recently alluded to doubt in one of the videos that we just recorded together a couple uh, a couple of days ago uh, viper seems to be going through a lot of the stuff that he already had to go through oh, there. God. <laughs> so there's a bit of the loss of consistency in his gameplay <laughs> maybe some lowering <laughs> of expectations in terms of tournament results uh, but there's something else viper is about to experience for the first time that you've already experienced also He's about to be a father for oh, the God. first time. Oh. And it also, folks have pointed out that that might also be a big factor here and there. And uh, and I want to hear about that from you, Viper, but first out. Uh, how was it like for you, Doubt, when you became a father for the first time? Was it harder for you to focus on competitive Age of Empires 2? Or is this all just an excuse from Viper fans? <laughs> just a excuse. It's more or less the same. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think remember the first time you heard that you were going to be a dad. You were in China, right? Mm, yeah, I was in China yeah. the first time I heard that. I lost the phone oh, as well. Like, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. I need to hear the story. Whoa, now, whoa. Let's was focus on to the plan? question. <laughs> okay, first the question. Does it Did it change anything for you in terms of how hard it was to practice or focus? Mm, no, no. It's... No, no, no. Some things for you. When I hit the back streak a long time ago, yeah, then you think about your life. Like, I'm losing tournaments. Basically, when I start streaming, I think during STL, I probably remembers. I went through like kind of a tough phase as a player. I was losing like even to fire, basically. Oh, <laughs> well, okay, it, was, it, was, fire. it was rough. It was very rough. <laughs> but not because I'm playing like a bad player, but during the tournament, yeah, I felt like I start streaming, I stop poker and everything. And in my idea was like, if you're a streamer, you need to be your best player, right? That's it. Like who want to watch a player playing? And that bring up the pressure and then tournament show up. I remember the tournament, I was the biggest favorite. The STL format was weird, right? My biggest oh, yeah. was Jibaton, oh, God. basically. God, that was... <laughs> like, oh. It was a limited amount of the players you can send per tournament. And the tournament yeah. 21 I supposed to play, it was, well, lesser players. Mm. And that's it. I put so much pressure on me. Like, on my team for everything. Like, I need to win this for my team. I had the easiest bracket out of all of them. And that was a tough one. <laughs> I failed miserably. <laughs> After that, I recover. After that, I was like, what the fuck I'm doing? Yeah. yeah. Then I like give myself a slap. I was like, okay, then don't do this. If you bring this much pressure, enjoy the moment. Mm -hmm. Be happy what you got. And then I stabilize after and start kicking asses. Red Bull 2 champion. I remember that game so well, though. I know as well. It was cl cl <laughs> clearing on like a yeah. kind of a Black Forest version. Mm -hmm. When we watched that game, oh, God. It still that hurts. Was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so basically, in terms of becoming a father, nothing has changed. <laughs> only thing that changed, well, not changed, only thing I'm happy about is I'm working at home, and I'm really spending so much, like, I didn't miss a single moment with them. Mm -hmm. First steps, first words, when they're sick, they always hit me, like, I get sick, <laughs> then I screw up <laughs> right. tournaments, but they're, I'm always there for them, and that's something yeah. that, well, no other job and no money can buy. That's actually awesome. So, Viper... You feel like it affects your performance, as a lot of people like to say. Uh, I have no idea yet, right? Uh, no, no, but <laughs> they mean that the fact that you're an expecting father, ah, that okay. your mind might be somewhere else when you're in a tournament game. I mean, there's obviously. I, I yeah. believe that's that's the cope. <laughs> there are a lot of things going on, right? But I'm not. I don't think that has an impact on like how I'm playing, right? 
Uh, I'm still able to train the amount of training I want to train and all that stuff. So, I mean, I don't think there's any way to possibly evaluate how much this is affecting something or this is affecting something. I personally don't feel affected by it, so I don't think so. Obviously, what happens after I become a father, I don't know if I will have the same experience as Doubt, uh, but I hope so. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. <laughs> All right, so the other day, Doubt, I was just going through your YouTube channel, and I was happy to see that you upload videos almost every day. What? Uh, every yeah. day, not almost every day. Every wow. single day. But I was hoping to see a little bit more than just gameplay videos, which seems to be like the majority of videos. Have seen the Spanish guide? Well, there you go. Because First, because I think everyone that wants to be a content creator needs to take YouTube seriously. And second, because I think with your experience, with your own brain of Age of Empires, so you have like the perfect combination uh, to do really well on YouTube and with edited content. And I do remember an excellent Frank's guide and Spanish guide, I believe it was from you uh, not too long ago. It was a couple of months ago, actually. So can we expect to see more content like that from you in the not so distant future? One is already on the way. Man okay. Man at times. Which one? Advanced Man at Arms guide. Advanced Man at mm -hmm. Arms guide. Wow. When, when, when can you expect it? Depends on my editing guy. <laughs> I already <laughs> done my part. But my problem there is, like, I want to say too much things, and then mm. you, you cannot. You have to balance. Like, some people will not understand; it's too advanced. You need to lower it down. Then you get lost in thought process. Then you need to record. Then it's awkward to record <laughs> yourself in the room. You turn your YouTube voice. I'm not there yet. <laughs> but if I make them more regularly, obviously, I would feel like same with streaming, right? At the beginning, streaming was really hard for me. Like, again, not my way of like communicating with the people constantly and so on. <laughs> But yeah, one day when I stop competing, I will have more time for YouTube. So hopefully never. <laughs> That's the thing. Like back in the day before Doubt started streaming, like no one knew how Doubt was like. Everyone that tried to type to him on Google or something, he ignored them, right? He never answered anyone. Still do that. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> he still does that. That's yes. the point. Like no one knew how Doubt was as a person, except if we like had met him in Dubai and such. And uh, yeah, I mean, you could tell that obviously it was going to be a good fit for streaming. Uh, just should have happened sooner. But at least we were able to make a good meme out of him, like Lord Doubt and all the grass Thank you, Doubt. Viper. You're welcome, you're welcome. <laughs> no, I do remember, I was pretty shocked when I, when I saw how talkative he was and explaining. And, you know, I would expect someone who never replies to your messages mm. to not talk all that much on stream, but that was not the case whatsoever. He replies uh, if you ask, like, hey, you want to want to make money somehow with the tournament? Then oh, he will reply, obviously. Th thanks for the tip. Yeah. Thanks for the tip. Uh, thanks so next Expert time, League. <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> Next time, I know. But, no, my strategy is like if I want to have Doubt doing something, I'll go. So uh, if Doubt does not answer, I'll just go to GL. Hey, I yeah. want this for the YouTube channel, and boom, <laughs> <Doubt is there. laughs> magically it works. <laughs> also You're like welcome the, as well. <laughs> Doubt, what was, your, what was your first guide again on YouTube? Was it the Spanish one? Uh, Frank's one. Frank's one. Yeah. Uh, the amount of time he talked about it for like four months before it <laughs> got published <laughs> on Discord. Like he kept talking and bringing it up to us. Okay, cool. I, because I wrote the script, and then you yeah. keep adding something, then you move, <laughs> then you read it, and it's complete mess. And it's... did you spend as long on the Man at Arms guy? No, I did it in like ten minutes. It should be disaster. Okay, okay. <laughs> it should not be good. <laughs> it was very short. Like, but we will but, see. But it's really tough, right? Because with the amount of experience and knowledge we have gained in this game, I, sp I say we because I played a while as well. But like. There's so the game is so complex and there's so many situations that you can end up in, right? It's so that's why I kind Depends. of have been, yeah. I've been really turned off from making like guides and coaching and all that stuff because I just I feel like no matter what I say, I'll never be happy because there's just so much more I would like to say, right? <laughs> like a single topic with my arms, we can probably talk five hours about it and present so many different situations where to use it, when to use it, when to transition, how to balance equal. There's so much, and that goes for like every unit in the game, every save, every situation. It's just that's an interesting point because I think in teaching in general, it's uh, very often it's all about what you don't have to say. Mm -hmm. It's about signing what needs to be said and what can be left out. Yeah. But it, when, whenever you're a teacher, it also depends who are you teaching, right? But you guys don't know who you are teaching. You are teaching yeah. a lot of people, so it's going to be harder to decide what to say and what not to say. Someone will be like, "Oh, what's the best sieve for what's the best sieve uh, for water?" And you'll say like, "Oh, no, not water. Look, what's the best sieve?" It was like, oh, Koreans. And then he goes Koreans on a map where they are bad. And it's like, Koreans <laughs> no, were bad. Well, you told me to go Koreans. Good, right? yeah. It's just, you it, can't. In any case, Doubt, if you're looking for content ideas, I, I got to say, one of my very favorite pieces of Age of Empires 2 content of all time was this guide you started back in the Vubli days, where you ba mm. basically just created like a new account. You started uh, playing against 1400s, I believe, uh -huh. which would be the equivalent of like, I don't know, 600 maybe in the DE ladder. 
And then you would play those guys and it would point out, okay, so these guys make these types of mistakes. Boom, boom, boom. Then you start winning games, of course, and then you start playing against 1600s and you go like, okay, so 1600s, they do not make these types of mistakes anymore, but they are still very bad here and here and here. And I thought that was incredibly interesting. And I really would love to see all uh, that thing started again. Well, it's on YouTube. <laughs> Why do I need to do it again? Yeah, the, the thing is you stopped it, if I remember correctly, and I think you stopped it because someone started smurfing you. Peach. <laughs> I think it was AMB. It was a VH. I would say MBL. Uh. Okay, somebody. Okay, so sorry, MBL. VH was it. Started smurfing you, right? And then it started losing games, and then it sort of loses the purpose of the whole thing. So if you need some content idea ideas, I think that would be amazing. I already have one really good. I'm not gonna share here because Viper is around, but I have a really <laughs> good one. Oof, you're gonna love it. <laughs> right on Discord. No. You wanna know? <laughs> I'm not gonna steal your content. If it's your idea, I'll let you have it respectfully. My next plan. It's perfect because when you're streaming, I will do in-game guides. Oh, let me text Jeremy's. <laughs> you're playing. Okay, go on. I don't know. You get gods. And now mm -hmm. in-game guide for the gods. I'm already playing streaming on Twitch and I'm explaining every single step of the way I how I not play gods and that <laughs> matchup I get. That's old. Really? People have done similar things in the past. Well, like, maybe like in that, not on my level. But it's like <laughs> I've done it in the past, for example, where I just like, okay, this is going to be an educational focused stream. So I'll do the same thing every time I get a sieve, a matchup. Mm -hmm. I'll just talk through everything there. But obviously, I didn't make a dedicated guide like you were saying. So it could still work as a good YouTube series. Yeah, just like. I'll think about it. Yeah. Once a week. <laughs> Once a week, you have a game <laughs> like that. Perfect. Okay, so do we still have time for a bit of a Q&A session with your questions? I think we do, right? Yeah, we should be fine. Yeah. Okay, so we asked people on YouTube and on Twitter to give us a couple of questions for doubt. So let's start. Oliver Tate asks, what era of Age of Empires 2 was the most fun to play doubt? Beginning. Beginning it was the all... It, mm -hmm. When you're a pleb, when you're just learning everything, that's the best. That's, I miss that. I think that's for every game almost. It's so four as well, it's mythology. So yeah. <laughs> like learning so much. To, like, then you lose, then you, how did they lose? I remember I used to watch every single record game I played and lost. I don't do that anymore. But back mm. in the days, like, how did they lose? Why did they make mistakes? Is a strategy he's doing unstoppable. <laughs> and back then, we were all making <laughs> tons of mistakes, and he seems unstoppable to me. It was so fun there. Uh, speaking of Age of Empires 4, th that's something we do bring up from time to time here, and we know what your opinion is. What about yours? How do you feel about Age of Empires 4 now? Unpopular opinion, I guess, these days. I think it's an amazing game. I, th I still think him had the potential. Like, at the beginning, I was really, like, glued to the game. I couldn't wait to wake up and stream. <laughs> I mm. wanted to play yeah. more and more, and, like because there were so many options. But at one point, like, the balance was bad, and then you realize, like, Ooh, I got fast imp with Holy Roman Emperor, go fast Shabia. Then you realize you're not smart. It's just simple. <laughs> it's a simple thing. It's kind of mm. too simplified at some point. At least I got that feeling. It's like, oh, I go for the relics straight away. Well, everybody does that. It's, it didn't have that depth to me at a certain point. But the beginning was insane. Balance was a bit off. Like We didn't even hear the lad at the beginning. The demos blowing up everything. It was a disaster. But oh, they yeah. fix the game now. I'm following tournaments here and there. The game looks really fun. I do believe they still have problem in the late game because we just work too fast. And when you get like imagine AOE two, where we just work like on turbo, and you're playing 120 villages, you would just end up with a huge bank, right? That's something that I don't like in AOE four. But opening feudal castle really really fun in that game now. Do you play from time to time? No. <laughs> Why not, if you think it's such a good game? Well, again, no time. I prefer to watch. No like People actually prefer to watch AE2. Like, for me, to get to the AE4, to learn everything, the meta, like the new teams now, the balance, how you want to play, I cannot commit to that right now. Okay. That's fair enough, I think. Okay, so then we have Linity007. What top player that isn't active anymore do you miss the most? I think that's easy. Well, Cab. <laughs> Cab? Mm hmm Interesting. Was it because he had such a close connection? Were you guys really good friends? Yeah, for sure. Like, he was, like, first person, well, person, that sounds sad, first person, let's say, who helped me for no reason, right? He was there to practice for me for every tournament and, like, asking nothing in return. Like, doubt, let's win. <laughs> like, can we bond, we spend time, we meet each other in Dubai, like, four or five times, I forgot. 
amazing guy, always super nice, always there to help. Yeah, would love to have him around. Uh, was there one of the oldest players or one of the older players back in the days that you think would have what it takes to be at the top of the ladder in these days, fighting against Viper and you mm. and Hera? He would be more similar to Tato and myself. Like He mm. would make strategies, but execution <laughs> would not be there. Yeah, you mean Cap, but in general, uh, when you think about Coven, Grunt, would those guys have what it takes to be at the top of the ladder in these days too? It's already didn't, problem, you know, always, <laughs> didn't you always used to tell, say that Coven is, was overrated? by a lot of people no i think you love coven right yeah, yeah i love oh, okay okay no 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 coven was insane i remember i think i heard someone say it yeah i Go was <laughs> thank you viper <laughs> i was at the top of the ladder when the game was slowing down like more or less everybody quit mm -hmm. i was number one on the ladder and then coven after two years of army come back and started playing with me mm -hmm. he beat me <laughs> yeah <laughs> we end up playing 10 games in a row and score was 5-5 five, five. i was like damn <laughs> He didn't yeah. play for two years. Maybe he played some practice games before that, but he was an amazing talent guy, right? Did the meta change over those years? Uh, meta was doesn't it's... change as fast as today, right? Then it yeah. was the player base so, was smaller. You're only good so at was... zero competition, right? So it was Spear and Scrums. No, it was he was going uh, Bloodline Scout. He was oh. going, yeah. Well, <laughs> I I heard of... I'm excited. <laughs> you are making fun. But then it was a new thing. Like, uh, okay. I'm playing Scrum Spearman, and he's showing like with Bloodline Scouts cleaning me up. Like it was a new thing. Like, damn. Uh -huh. Then I playing that. Then I, then I switched to Archers. It was like 10 games in one day, believe it or not. And every game was different. And there was like a lot of people outside waiting for the record games. It was, it mm. was fun. Mm -hmm. I kind of missed the Hans War. Mm -hmm. like, even on Wubly, like you would host a game on Wubly and then like. You could join as a spectator, right, in the game lobby. Yeah, of course. It, just like you'd host the game and you see the spectator lobby fill up. Yeah, it was it was fun. Spectator chats, one of the things I missed the most <laughs> in Bubble. Good you times. guys wouldn't see that because you guys were always playing. I, I watched sometimes. I got <laughs> to take part in it. So, Dad, I would assume people like Coven, you think would perfectly be capable of being at the top of the well, ladder in Chris these did days too. That right, Chris come back from after like ten years or so, start streaming, start playing, and he got like two point five, right? But still maintaining a. Full time job. I wanted to say real job, full time job. So that, that, that also shows like Chris. I'm not sure how many one one tournaments he has participated in since he came back, but he hasn't had great success in one one, right? Yeah, but right. To what we said earlier, with the, like the team game difference in the uh, gap isn't as big, right? Because Chris right. definitely holds his ground in team games, as he showed with right. Team Canada, right? Right, so, right. right. No, true, very true. Yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. very good player. One v one is a is a different beast. So yeah, to speak. sweaty. All right, so I guess we have time for one more question. Doubt Roger Engeli wants to know: Does your son play Age of Empires? And I'll add to it: Does your daughter play Age of Empires? Uh, no, my kids are not playing real-time strategy games. They are they're too young. They're six and four. They what do they play? Fortnite and Bloons? No, 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 no. We, I, I just installed Deep Overcooked, Galactic Overcooked. Survivor. Oh, Overcooked! I'm playing yeah, now that with him. It's such a mess. It's so fun. <laughs> nice. Wait, did you say your son? He should be a little bit older than mine. Is he six, seven? Like soon to be seven. Soon to be seven. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, a seven is a. Well, it's more than enough. It's old. Old for enough. Real, to start for playing Age of it. Empires. No. I started <laughs> Does he watch you play? Does he watch you play from time to time? Uh, 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 yeah, he surprised me a few times because, like, dad is working and they never mm. enter oh. the room. <laughs> I like that you have like this. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't know what I'm doing, like they like how to tell them I'm playing video games. And then he was like secretly coming in my room and like was watching what I'm doing. Like, what the now we need to explain to him that I'm playing the game. <laughs> he was like following what I'm playing, like so yeah. Soon I will have to awesome. have a talk with him. That's awesome. Uh, my kids know exactly who you are, who Doubt uh -huh. is, and who Hera is. So my kids know exactly your names. And so your kids don't understand what you're doing for a living. I'm playing on. I'm working on PC from home. That's it. Okay, so that's okay. <laughs> Makes sense. Good to know. Del, listen, man, these things are always a lot of fun with you. Talking Age of Empires with you, it's always fun. Thank you so much for taking the time. Viper and first, maybe say something, then I can say <laughs> thanks thank as well. <laughs> Thank you, Dad, for showing up. It was a pleasure. I'm sure we'll see each other very soon. Thank you, guys, for the invite. Hopefully, people will like it as well. Thumb up, subscribe. Wow. He was not even asked to do this. Perfect. Perfect. He did it for free. You guys heard the man. If you enjoyed the video, liking, commenting, and most importantly, subscribing. We'll see you soon, and hope you guys enjoyed it.